Oh, no, dog I... shit. What? I didn't bring a fork for a salad. How am I going to eat that? They didn't. The girl didn't remind me, and I'm a thicko, and I never remember. Not got an integral spoon. No, shit, dog shit. All That's I've got is it. All I've got is a samosa and a. a you could use the samosa as a sort of as what a shuffle, it? or just a carnival of bad food. Hey, look, you could. That's your coffee. Use that as a scoop. It might be a little coffee flavoured. <laughs> it certainly smells it. It's my little guilty pleasure from. Marks and Sparks food. What, a samosa? Yeah, I always buy it when I know I've already bought enough food. <laughs> it's like a, it's a, it's a top up that I didn't need, but I love them. It's like I've had to really concentrate quite hard not to, as a reflex, just buy some Percy pigs whenever I go into Marks and Spencer for anything else. Mm. Just need to go and get some socks and some Percy pigs. <laughs> I've, um, I've just had a text from my son's school reminding me that there's a gin evening. Gin and comedy. Come what, at school? At school, not for the kids. It's like a fundraiser in the evening for parents. But gin and comedy. So stand up. Oh, it could end so badly. It could start so badly. I kind of want to go because I like gin and I like stand-up <laughs> comedy. So, quite literally, what's not to like? But on the other hand, our boy's only been at the school for, this is his second term, you know, it's a, he's, he's only just started. I don't know many of the parents very well. And I don't want to get to know them by making a right royal tit of myself, which I could see happening mm. if the gin Flows. flows. Mm. Or it'll be very sensible and schooly, and you'll each get a thimble of gin at the beginning of the evening. Not be and, and that that'll kind of annoy me as well. Mm. <laughs> I've been to a school quiz. Which the first year we went, we were quite alarmed at the amount of booze being passed around. Passed we, around? Well, like, well, like under the table kind of. People just bring. No, we were invited to bring it. Parents. Oh, with, okay, right. With with the teachers. Me and Chops thought we we'd sort of underplayed the booze that year. So this year, mm. we took a lot of booze, like a, a, a huge re re reusable carrier bag, including two bottles of gin. What? I had a bottle of vodka. A, a, not a crate of lager, but you know, a box of lager, <laughs> and. We went there all guns blazing. And oh, God. Yeah, to a school quiz. We did well. We won, actually. But I was... The problem Extra was... points awarded really, for bringing I, a pub with you. I don't know whether it was this, the time of year or that night or people's circumstances, but no one was as drinky as they were the previous time. No. But I just decided to... I brought all this booze and it was mighty heavy. So I thought, <laughs> I don't, don't want to go home with it quite as heavy as it was. So I just... I waded in and I was... I was drinking largely neat vodka, <laughs> neat orange flavoured vodka, and I was—you know—when you get pissed much quicker than you anticipated. I was, yes. I was doing that, but trying to be good at a quiz at the same time. Yeah, and I might have—I I, was—I think uh, I think I embarrassed myself a little. In, in what way? Well. I think I, I, I voted to call our, our team something that was a little bit unsavoury. I think my wife is disappointed in me. I think that was well, the like first... soapy titwank or I'm something. <laughs> I'm actually trying to remember. Oh, I know what it was. I decided that we should call ourselves Gash in the Attic. Because <laughs> I just thought it what? was... I don't know, I just thought it was funny. Anyway, my wife thought it was totally immature and unacceptable. I don't know how I'm going to eat this with the, the top of the coffee cup and crawling in the bucket. What an idiot. I, um, I don't drink a lot of spirits. Certainly not in any great quantity. Well, I, might, I, have, I might have a wee bit of whiskey at an evening, but, and, um, I just find with spirits, you go, 
Oh, that was nice. I'll have another one of those. I'll have another yes. one of those. I'll have another one of those. Still not drunk. Boom! Drunk! Yeah. It's and it's... Oh, that's that's a dangerous the problem. area to be in. There's a delay there, a mm. bit like an 80s turbo. And um, by the time you've committed with the throttle, booze like some, yeah. some 15 minutes later, it, it just hits you like some you've sort of carnival mallet. Torque steer into a. Torque steer into an embarrassing conversation <laughs> with the teacher or another. Is that dad. what happened? Well, I th Mrs. Smith, Chops was, I think, less than happy with my behaviour that evening she said she said why were you so drunk I was like well because it was notoriously boozy the previous time and we took a load of booze so I just kept shoving sure. just kept funneling it in um, but yeah I got some of the questions right and um, I might have heckled though I think I heckled quite loudly and I don't think you were supposed to do that at a school quiz a bit drinky you know like that uh, I watch this go on so cool. Look at that! It works. Well, sort of. It, I, don't know. I kind of heckled the uh, pub quiz in my old local once because um, one of the questions was, uh, "What is the biggest? Uh, what's the biggest car maker in the world?" And I went, I "Just I, I put my hand up and went, sorry, just to be absolutely clear, you do mean car maker, not vehicle maker." Mm. And the quizmaster, he's got the benefit of a mic. When, what? <laughs> and I went, is it is it definitely car maker, not vehicle maker? Because the answers would be different. Because at that point, mm. cars was Toyota, but vehicles over it was GM. Mm -hmm. mm. And he went, what are you talking about? And I went, is it? I'm just saying, it, it, you, you do mean cars. You're not just sort of conflating that it's, it's definitely cars, not vehicles. Overall. At this point, was he rolling one sleeve up? And we're starting to windmill with one of the arms. What he actually did was he just went, the answer is General Motors, and gave everyone, everyone the answer, or the answer he was looking for. Mm -hmm. And um, I kind of backed down then. Because my one competitive advantage, which is knowing, as it turns out, too much about car and vehicle making, yep. uh, I just I kind of spun it away. I watched, um, I watched oh. your, oh, you just dropped a bit of sandwich mm. down the side of the mm. seat, mm. the Bentley hand-stitched mm. in mm. cruise seat. Mm. You're going to get bollocked. Don't that. turn them on. Imagine if George Clark did <laughs> disappointing spaces. <laughs> George Clark's. <laughs> George Clark's <laughs> underwhelming spaces. Yeah. Underwhelming places or spaces. <laughs> he just walks into the living room in a sort of so breathy as well. One, one bed, new build flat. <laughs> it, it, uh, just generally unaccept, unexceptional <laughs> architecture. And he just walks in and just goes. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is all right, I suppose, isn't it? It's, um, it's not. I mean, it's not all that. It, 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 from the outside, you'd think it'd be a little bit bigger, but I suppose... Oh. I was really looking forward to this day, and I was... This sofa is... Mm, I suppose, I mean... What would you put there? It just... I mean... What an underwhelming space this has become. <laughs> But I sort of, you could have a little kind of sister show in like <laughs> Kevin MacLeod's bad designs. <laughs> I think he'd quite enjoy that. Now, Mary and Peter have decided to put the staircase there, which is frankly a fucking idiotic place to put it. <laughs> Six months later, I'm back, the house is finished, and sure enough, Mary's fallen down the stairs three times already. <laughs> it's a bad bit. It's a closing piece to camera. It's just like, I fucking told them. <laughs> Because he the, likes, he, I mean, let's be honest, McLeod. I aspire to do his, his, his verdict pieces. But he enjoys. It's a full one minute chat to a, to a drone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, that is his life, isn't it? Just, it's, it's just summarising many, often many years of filming. Mm. 
in a one minute piece of camera to a drone. Kevin McLeod's bad designs. Yeah. It's I, also because I was th- I wanted to do, I was suggesting they do um, grand designs unhinged or uncorked <laughs> or something, you know, um, unleashed. Uh, grand designs after dark. One of those names. <laughs> grand designs after dark. Well, I mean, that's a bit weird. That sounds like something else. But <laughs> Kevin McLeod's constantly trying to have sex with the house owner's wife. <laughs> um, no, the the one. I had in mind is where you just unleash that bit of Kevin McLeod where he's clearly oh he's he's having he really an eye enjoys twi- when people screw up an eye twitching irritation moment yeah it? well that's it there's two things first of all there's that mid bit in the arc of the show where he always goes it's an impressive ambition but I can't help feeling that Anne and Sarah have been a little bit too ambitious here and this just isn't going to get done on schedule mm. Six months later, I'm back, and then it's all actually. Usually, it's okay, or they've glossed over the fact they've fucked up. But that little bit where you want, you can sense that he's really where he wants to go is. He wants to go back. Three months later, I'm back, shouting, "I told you so!" and kicking over step ladders <laughs> just to really fuck them. <laughs> what they come up with here is something that you couldn't have gathered from the plans. It's a fucking awful house. <laughs> Elaine and Keith have ended up with here is is this incredible space that looks wonderful on TV and is sure to allow their children to fall over 30 feet into the vestibule within weeks. Yeah. It's, that's it's, what it is, isn't it? It's onto, just, it's onto cold, unforgiving marble. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Polished concrete isn't just fashionable and attractive, it also cracks the skulls of people of all ages who haven't noticed there are no banisters for some reason. Oh, guys, that's it. That's it. Just, yeah. Kevin, what, Kevin McLeod's design. deadly designs? Yeah. <laughs> Look at that. Why is this protein bar? First of all, it was two pounds ninety. Two pounds ninety. Three pounds for a bar of filth. It's now ninety p. So clearly, that that pricing strategy is not working brilliantly. It's worked with me. It's well, well it is the nineties work, but the two pound ninety. If they they could sell it at full price, they got is it because it's nearly out of date. Yeah, it's got a very American aggressive exercise. Focus this is now. yes. Look, grenade, grenade. carb killer, spell K I L L A. Carb killer does actually sound like who the boys in the head. One of yeah. those kind of yeah, yeah, you know, like rat very aggressive rap battleist. Mm. But grenade. This is something. Have you ever noticed that um, this won't taste very nice? No, of course it won't. I'm pretty sure it won't. All independent television production companies set up by men have needlessly aggressive names. They do. Angle Grinder Productions. Yeah. Oh, that. Yeah, boy, Machine boy. Gun Pictures. It shows it ricochet. Uh, yeah. Sarin gas attack on a subway. Films Limited. Why? Why is? What, what is it about men setting up? They kind of because they sort of go. Kind of, oh, we can't. Call, you know, we don't call it something a bit wet. We've got no. to, we've got, but why? Mm. It's it's only TV production companies. You don't. Mm. I don't think like uh, you know a, a man would set up a plumbing firm and and call it like Nunchucker Pictures <laughs> Limited. But yeah, because it's a TV production company. Depth charge plumbing. Yeah, limited. Depth. <laughs> That's quite a good name for a plumber. I'm gonna uh, dive into this uh, tray of raspberries. Bloody hell! You've got a full punnet. That's a lot. Punnet's uh, punnet's one of those words, isn't it? That's only got one use. Container of fruit. Well, people like, say I'm gonna open them. A six pack of whoopass, you wouldn't open a punnet of punishment, would you? <laughs> would you? Maybe um, that is what British action heroes would do. And that's why there's no British know, action up. heroes. Well, I saw Jason Statham's. <laughs> pun- oh, there is Jason Statham. High diving at the Olympics in 1990. A punnet of pain? Mm. That's a Jason Statham film. I'm going to tear open a package of pain on you. <laughs> Right, who wants a portion of pain? <laughs> a sachet well, of discomfort. <laughs> 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 oh, 
<clears throat> What's it got in it? I feel like your 90p needlessly aggressive bar has, has only disappointed. I'm worried that it will make me far stronger, but also more aggressive and make my dick shrink. That's my worry. I, I can't afford those things to happen. Sort of. Yeah. You know? Well, you see, this tray of unwashed raspberries <laughs> is giving me my recommended daily intake of uh, pesticides, so... <laughs> or is it just one of your five a day? One of your five... <laughs> doctors recommend this is one of your five a day intake of chemicals and gnat shit. 